Some videos went viral last summer of some galloping crocodiles and many people were shocked by what they were seeing. To think a mainly aquatic species can move on land with such agility is both amazing and scary to think about. So in light of these videos and my book being released that covers the subject, I thought I'd do a video analyzing the truth and detail of this ability in today's crocodilians. To start off, being terrestrial is not a new or unique trait for crocodilians. Terrestrial crocodilians were actually the very first animals in their lineage, and it is one of the reasons crocodilians are not truly considered living fossils. If you want to learn about prehistoric land crocodiles in full detail, I highly recommend watching these videos from the channel Paleoanalysis. But in short, crocodilomorphs started as small terrestrial predators in the Triassic and then diversified into several body plans. The terrestrial body plan was kept for a very long time and can be seen in many different species. Terrestrial crocodilians even survived past the KPG mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs. Some had hoof-like claws specifically for a life on land, and some are believed to have been arboreal too. However, these crocodilians would become extinct either due to natural competition, change in climate or habitat, or human interference. These were the true land crocodiles, and while they're gone forever, today's crocodilians still have the ability to move well on land. Crocodilians are known for three different ways to move on land, belly crawling, high walk, and galloping. Crocodiles specifically are the only ones that can gallop on land, with alligators, caimans, and gharials not being able to do so. The reason for this is not 100% known, but a possible reason is that crocodiles generally have longer limbs compared to other crocodilians. However, galloping does not necessarily make a crocodilian faster. A study on speeds of running crocodilians found that there was no difference in speeds between galloping and non-galloping animals, so those alligators can still move fast when they want to. Still, it is the galloping crocodiles that have grabbed everyone's attention recently. What we're looking at in this video is the Cuban crocodile, and these animals are very well known for their galloping. They actually have longer limbs compared to other crocodiles, and the reason for this is that their ancestors used to eat a now extinct ground sloth. Therefore, they're actually built for a somewhat terrestrial lifestyle. This makes them one of the few crocs to still somewhat hunt on land. What makes this species more nerve-wracking is that they are one of if not the most aggressive species of crocodilian. They're known to briefly chase after zookeepers, and there is some evidence for pack hunting behaviors in this species too. While Cubans have been gaining attention for their terrestrial abilities, they're not the only ones. Other species that have been known to be somewhat terrestrial are the dwarf crocodile and dwarf caiman species. Both the dwarf crocs and caimans actually forage around in forests at night and aren't too aquatic. The other notable species is the Australian freshwater crocodile, and this species is extremely well known for its galloping. The freshwater crocodile actually has the fastest recorded speed of any crocodilian at just over 10 miles per hour. This also brings me to my next point. They are not as fast as everyone thinks they are. I have seen claims of them running as fast as 20 to 50 miles per hour and that they can even race with horses in short distances. To debunk this, I'm going to use an analogy a keeper at Gareland told me. Look at how long and muscular a horse's legs are. Take a look at how well built these animals are for moving fast on land. Got a good idea? Okay, now look at these short stubby legs on crocodilians. Please don't be betting on the crocodilians in the 100 yard dash against a horse. Truth is, crocodilians can only run 5 to 10 miles per hour on land. Don't get me wrong, 10 miles per hour is still a respectable speed, it's just not the legendary status that others have claimed. Truth is, any healthy adult can outrun these guys. Also, don't run in a zigzag, you're just wasting energy. Now to answer the question, how likely is an alligator or crocodile going to chase you? Not very. Crocodilians, at the end of the day, are still semi-aquatic ambush predators. They either hunt at the water's edge, in the water, or leap vertically into the air to get prey. They may briefly get out of the water after an initial strike, but this isn't for long periods. Also, most of the time when crocodilians move fast on land, it's to get away from you, not to come after you. Galloping in particular is most commonly seen when the animal is trying to escape a threat and get in the water, not to obtain prey. Now let's say though that you've encountered a Cuban or a smaller Nile crocodile or even an American alligator that's lost its fear of humans. Just run quickly and you'll be good. These guys are not endurance runners and they are not built for long high speed chases on land. In fact, this can kill them. Crocodilians built up lactic acid very easily and prolonged physical stress can kill these animals. It is much more likely for a crocodile to swim after you from afar than for it to run after you. Still. A good rule of thumb when in croc territory is to stay 30 feet from the water's edge or 30 feet from the animal and you'll be good. 
While the crocodiles of today are nowhere near the terrestrial lifestyle of their ancestors, we should still be lucky to have these last representatives on this planet. However, this isn't 100% certain to be the case. You see, the Cuban crocodile I brought up is actually a critically endangered species and has been facing many challenges with reduced habitat, poaching, and hybridization with the American crocodile. The dwarf crocodile is also listed as vulnerable, and it doesn't help that the species might be split into three or four distinct species, which would then lessen those population numbers. Just think that's possible that the last Bovarasuchus or Mikosuchus could go extinct in our lifetime. If you want to prevent this, go to a zoo that has these animals or donate to the crocodile specialist group, which focuses on crocodilian conservation. Let's keep the last land crocodiles alive for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video, I recommend my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians, which looks at other various subjects like alligators and sewers, giant crocodiles, the Ramry Massacre, the new crocodile species, and more. It's only $14.99 and I wrote this for the most casual of crocodile lovers to enjoy because, let's be honest, we don't all have PhDs and hundreds to spend on books. Get What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians today on Amazon, Lulu, and Barnes & Noble for physical releases, and Google Books and Gumroad for digital. Like and subscribe and I'll come out with more croc content soon. Thanks for watching and have a great day.